hosted by Meredith Vieira. I'm Meredith Vieira, and this is an intimate portrait of Laura Dern. Sometimes it's easy to forget that Laura Dern is acting. That's because she finds the humanity in her characters and seems to really live it. Give her a gritty, sexually daring role, and she brings out the heart and the innocence. True, Laura Dern was born to actor parents, but as her close friend Mary Steenburgen tells us, acting is in this woman's soul. I fell in love with acting. I fell in love with the opportunity to fine-tune a craft. She really came from two people that really cared about the work, and uh, that's her anchor, and that's what she really brings to the process, and it's the one thing that she holds on to because she knows it's true. With actors Diane Ladd and Bruce Dern as parents, Laura Dern knew from an early age that acting was a craft and a calling. She plugged in in her first movie and her first sizable role. I called her up, I remember the next day, and she said, okay, you've just completely blown me away. She doesn't need to, need to have perfect, perfect hair and makeup when she wakes up in the morning. And uh, you know, that's a sign of somebody who's more interested in acting than being a celebrity. I'm Mary Steenburgen, and this is an intimate portrait of a remarkable young actress, my dear friend, Laura Dern. Laura Dern has loved to act since she was a very little girl and hopes to be doing it for a long time to come. So at age 32, she wasn't quite sure whether she was ready to be celebrated for her achievement. They're really honoring you for your courage, your bravery, and your risk-taking, which are the things we talked about 15 years ago. Don't be afraid to take the chances. My father gave me a toy fire truck when I was, I think, three. And it was like a little mini bicycle fire truck and it had its own bell. And I felt so in control. I loved it. I loved being in charge. I loved manning my own ship. I loved having a bell to let people know I was on the way. I, I just loved the feeling of that. And it, my daddy gave it to me. In 1967, Laura Elizabeth Dern's parents, actors Bruce Dern and Diane Ladd, gave her the gift of life, of talent, and an ethic to guide it. I was raised in an environment where people's goals were to be pure and honest in their work. And the love of Laura's grandmother, Mary, was an important part of the equation. There's the extraordinary gift that some children get of the unconditional parent, which is the grandma or grandpa. I, uh, it makes me so emotional just to think about it. I'm the luckiest person on earth to have my grandmother. She's the greatest thing in the world. She's so amazing because she truly loves me completely. I admire her so much. She's my heart, my love, everything you can think about. My grandma gave me a doll that is the one toy I still have to this day. It's just a, you know, a real regular, sweet, um, plastic baby doll that I have cut all her hair off. There's all different kinds of nail polish on every toe, different colors. She has just been through the ringer. She named all her dolls Violet. <laughs> I said, how come you picked Violet for all, all the baby dolls? She said, because I like it. Laura was the miracle baby born against incredible odds. Diane and I were married in 1960. We had a child right away who uh, died in a drowning accident. In a 1992 interview, Diane Ladd talked about the loss they shared. 
our first child died in a very tragic accident when she was two years old. And immediately following that, like three months later, I had a tubular pregnancy and I almost died. From 62 to 60, early 66, it was off and on, very rocky. Both had a lot of guilt, both had a lot of, we never got it out and we made a huge mistake. We never went and talked to anybody about it. Diane said that she, uh, I'm gonna have another child. She was determined she was gonna have another one. And after six years, she did. They were working on a movie called The Wild Angels together. And my father seems to think that all the jiggling around on the back of a motorcycle was able to shake an egg loose enough to <laughs> bypass the problem area and get me through. About three months after the movie, this little miracle started appearing in her stomach. We had no plans for her. We were just thrilled she made it, thrilled she was alive. She sparkled at the very beginning. The miracle of Laura's birth was not enough to save her parents' marriage. Bruce Stern and Diane Ladd were divorced in 1969 when Laura was only two years old. So I moved a block away to an apartment building in Santa Monica, and Diane and I had a rocky road the first seven or eight years uh, afterward. And so it was tough for me to visit Laura without hard feelings. My mother obviously had a lot of problems with my father um, that were her own personal uh, concerns and upsets, etc. But when I was a child, if I had a problem with my father, she always took the high road and tried to explain him to me. Laura, Diane, and Grandma Mary formed an extended family with Diane's friend Avril Logan and her daughter Belina. They were single mothers um, raising these daughters. I was one, Belina was one and a half. They took us to El Coyote to eat and meet. I promptly put a bowl of guacamole all over her little peach fuzz hair. And we've been friends ever since. And from the day we met, um, we have been best friends and inseparable. And she is my sister. Avril's my aunt. They are my family. In a way, we had such female, we just energy around us all the time, and it gave us a lot of strength. I think Diane was fascinated by the fact that my mother was this very groovy English lady with a black boyfriend and a little mochaccino baby, <laughs> you know? I mean, Diane wanted to play my mother, and she kept begging my mother, please write the play, and we'll get Yatha Koto to play the father. Diane Ladd is some character. As my mother, <laughs> it's like an entirely other experience, one that's all-encompassing. I worked very hard at the word motherhood. A lot of people said, well, you can't be an actress and a mother, too. I said, why not? Some people are just motherhood, and they bungle the job. Mm -hmm. If I can do one thing well, why can't I do two, as long as I am willing to make the commitment and put the energy that motherhood deserves, and it deserves a lot of work. We give a lot of credit to our mothers for that because we didn't have our dads around, and they just said, let's keep them together. Whatever happens with us, if we go to a different place, and that's what happened. In 1971, when Laura was four, Diane married again, which took her and Laura to New York for three years before the marriage ended. I didn't see her for a while, and I missed her. We missed her so much that we would go to we would go to McDonald's. Mary would pick me up. It was, this was the routine. She'd pick me up from school. We'd sit in a restaurant, and she pretended that Laura was with her, and she uh, she put a place for Laura or a cup or whatever, and she talked like she was there. While in New York, Laura would visit her mother on the set of the soap opera The Secret Storm, and even had occasional bit parts. Her father continued to work in Los Angeles, where Laura and Diane returned in 1974. There, Laura could visit her father on the set. This person came up to me. He had an accent, he was rather large, and he said to me, you know, come over here, darling, I have a seat for you. And there was a director's chair with a little chair next to him, and it was Alfred Hitchcock. She'd been three hours on the set. He said, oh, oh, Laura, are you bored? And she said, oh, no, Mr. Hitchcock, I, I find it really interesting. He said, well, I'm bored. <laughs> he said, well, I've been doing this 55 years. 